वेलकम टू वीटीयु शिक्षण प्रोग्राम प्रोफेसर प्रकाश के आर् फ्रम द नाशनल इंस्टिट्यूट आफ् इंजीनियरी मैसूर इन द लास्ट क्लास वि वर् डिस्कसिंग अबउट एलेक्ट्रॉनिमाटिक्स एंड वी हेव स्टार्टेड वित् समिबल आफ् डिफरेंट एलेक्ट्रिकल कांपोनेंट्स ई वि कंटिन्यूइंग दैट इन टूडे सेशन अलांग वि एक्सापल आफ् एलेक्ट्रॉनिमाटिक्स when it comes to application level as you know in the last class we uh, were in this uh, slide and uh, i have told uh, a valves especially a 3 by 2 and 5 uh, by 2 or 5 by 3 valves which are controlled by a solenoid okay so in the last class i have told this is a, a three ports 1 2 3 there are three ports in it and two position this is its normal position and uh, when operated position and when you energize the solenoid valve you are going to change the position from this to this so that it can flow so and uh, if you take out the current from the solenoid the spring will push that back to the original also we have told about 5 by 2 way valve so in which you can find a five ports 1 2 3 4 5 there are five ports in it and uh, two positions again which is operated by a solenoid and uh, pilot operated pilot supported with a reset manual reset type of uh, valves button given for the manual reset type so now some more valves which are uh, uh, which can be uh, used or electromagnetically actuated on both sides in such a cases your uh, symbol will be little different so you will be having see if i say you will be having this side and as well as this side solenoids and if you have a, a one side solenoid it single solenoid and spring written type normally this symbol is showed Uh, to show the solenoid valve on a uh, drawing sheets yes, uh, the y is the solenoid here y1 is the solenoid which has been shown uh, on the drawing sheet and electromagnetically actuated with pilot uh, control so if the triangular symbol is written like this so then we call it as pilot assisted or pilot control type of solenoid valves also we can have a relay with uh, specifications of dc res resistors like this and uh, contactors or relays with nor uh, with uh, three normally open and uh, normally closed type of contact if you observe here so this is a relay which has uh, many contacts in it so uh, normally open contacts and closed contacts can be there in one single piece in a box manner so this has been made for the training purposes in industry we don't find this basically but in the training we need to have a uh, pins uh, through which the student should be enabled to put their wires so they make a box type and which are having more than one contact in one box Uh, now we have a three normally open and uh, normally closed contacts which are there in this relay contact so which is also represented by a symbol uh, k1 k represents here uh, a contactor or a relay sometimes we call it as a relay the main difference between the contactor and the relay is uh, in the relay we use it uh, low uh, voltage and current whereas in the uh, contactors the rating of the current ratings of the devices will be higher so uh, and uh, those devices contactors which are normally used in the industries will be built to avoid any uh, 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 that is the chattering of the each switches when you energize the device so that means there will be a perfect insulation between the two contacting element so that the influence of the one does not affects the other so this is how uh, the small difference 
between the relay and the contactors one can have uh, clearly in their minds. So now uh, when you talk about relays, uh, the relays are many types. So if you take now the types of relays, so contactor or relay with three normally open and one set of normally closed, see here 1, 2, 3, 3 normally open and one set of normally closed, so that is this one, so this is a 1 NC, NC contacting element, so 3 uh, NO contacting element. Suppose if you uh, observe this, uh, what is the use of this NO, means when the relay gets energized, this becomes energized. So, this will pull this rod, so or push this rod, so by doing that all this NO, NO will become NC and NC previously NC will become NO, means it gets open. So, all three gets closed. So, the advantage of this is now you can enable three outputs to get on and one output to break. So, you can break one of the output and uh, you can connect three more inputs when this gets energized. So, or you can use this relay internally to switch the uh, other uh, contacting elements in the circuit level itself. So, that depends upon the application how you use the relay. Okay. So, now uh, second type if you observe uh, the relay with uh, delay energizing and the third one is relay with delay de-energizing. So, that we also call it as uh, on delay and off delay, means through one you can create an on delay, means after your coil gets energized, so the total switches will become enabled after some time, so that we call it as an on delay to switch on this bulb after we press the button it takes time, so that is an on delay and off delay is you press the coil uh, power supply but however the switches gets off after certain time, this uh, we can find it in uh, many applications suppose if you go to uh, hotels uh, sometimes you, you press the hotel uh, lights but it will, it, will, it will not come on immediately, it takes some time to come or when you are locking your doors of the hotel rooms and you want to come, it does not uh, become off immediately when you switch off because it enables you to lock the doors, come out of the room, all those things. Means here there is a, a possibility to delay it, on delay it or off delay using certain concepts. So, uh, the relay with uh, delay de-energizing means off delay. So, the relay with delay energizing on delay. So, this is how we say the symbolic representation for the on delay is this and symbolic representation that we show for the off is this dark, completely dark here. If you observe this, this is completely dark here. Here we use a a crossing to that box, so that creates your uh, delay energizing type or on delay type that is off delay type. So, once after knowing all these things, uh, if you know uh, the concepts of the relay and uh, what are the different types of relays and their symbolic representations, you can start building your own circuits. Why we are discussing all this is? So, you should know the symbols because in any, in any industry when an electrical diagram is given you should be able to understand what are all there in the circuit and how those circuits can function. So, according to the circuit diagram that they had given, then you can follow that what is happening on the machine and if something is going wrong you can correct uh, at that point and you can have a maintenance or the machines done. So, now I have told you about different types of relays and uh, multiple uh, 
NO and NC contacts available, 3 NOs and 1 NC contact was available in the boxes that I have shown. So, but we will now know how the relay works. Relay is an electromagnetic switch. It is not uh, a general mechanical switch where we pull a lever or push something like that. You're, you're only passing the electrical current or coil. Coil and the core arrangements are there. If you observe here, so this is the coil winding and this is the core on which the coil is wounded. So, now you are passing the current through this coil. Okay, you can just press something somewhere from a distant location also. But when the current starts flowing in the coil, so this becomes uh, energized and because of that it induces a force, uh, electromagnetic type of force which in turn pulls this uh, liver arm. If you observe this, this is a liver arm which is given like this. So, when you energize this, so that means when you give a power supply to this, so power will move in the coil and it induces an electrical force and that force will pull this. So, when it pulls like this as the lever uh, is pivoted at this point, it, it moves up here, it moves up here and uh, this gets pushed. So, that means if this pu push, if this is pushed here, so then what will happen? This NC will become NO. It will move up. Na? So, it will become NO. Whereas, this upper one, upper one, this is begin in the beginning it is NO. Now, after the push, it becomes closed. So, that means you will have a contact established between this and this. Contact is established between this and this and this gets open. Okay. So, that means you are changing the state of the relay switch. That means, NCs are becoming NO and NO is becoming NC in the relay box. So, if you understand this uh, clearly, when we start uh, developing the circuits, I will explain how the circuits can uh, function with this kind of a setups. So, now uh, you are aware of symbols, let us start with some basic uh, uh, concepts of electro pneumatic control systems. As I told you earlier in the beginning when we started the pneumatics, the air always flows from bottom to top. So, air flow is from bottom to top, whereas electrical signal will flow from top to bottom that is like this. So, 24 volt supply will be on the top side and 0 will be at the bottom. So, electrical supply flows from top to bottom and uh, air will flow from bottom to top. Air flow will happen like this, electrical will become like this. That is why we have shown the one arrow like this for air and this is for electrical supply. So, now I will take a case of uh, moving a double acting cylinder with the help of 5 by 2 way uh, single solenoid valve, spring written type single solenoid valve. Uh, as, uh, see this, the symbolic representation of such a circuit will be consisting of an actuator, an actuator here and uh, this is uh, double acting. So, we will have two ports for it and I have taken a 5 by 2 way valve, two position 5 by 2 way valve. So, as I told air will travel from bottom to top, source is at the bottom, triangular, it is represented in triangular uh, thing. So, that is this and now uh, in the initially air is moving to this section and this side is vented. So, this will be at its retracted position. So, initially this will be at its retracted position. 
when you energize the solenoid valve 1.1 uh, valve 1.1 Y1. So, what happens? The position of the valve from this position changes to this position. In this position now, you can find this gets connected that is the source gets connected to this and this side gets connected to this. We are changing. After we energize this, this gets changed. So, that means air will go to this side, this side of the cylinder and this side gets connected to the vent, this side gets connected to the vent. So, this starts moving, so means when you energize this valve, this will move forward, when you de-energize this spring will push this back and it returns back. So, forward and return motion of the cylinder with the help of single solenoid uh, and spring to reset. So, this is your uh, pneumatic circuit. So, now the corresponding electrical circuit. Here, uh, I am taking an example of some logic also along with this. Let us in this consider an on logic to operate the system. So, then how this will work? what is the number of outputs here? So, the number of outputs in this circuit is, the number of outputs in this circuit is this one, y1 is the output element, solenoid is a output. So, we are, we have to energize this output with the help of a relay. So, if we use a relay to operate this solenoid valve, so how many relays you want? You have to have a one relay. So let me consider that one relay as K1, which I have taken. So this is the relay coil. The box represents the coil of the relay. And now I am trying to explain and logic operation for you with this kind of arrangement of switches. I will take S1 and S2 and connect them in series like this. That, that means 24 volt supply. Then for in the line 1, this is line 1 and this is line 2. In the line 1, I take S1, normally close, open type of switch S1 and then immediately I take a one more switch S2 which is also normally open type. And then I will take it to my relay coil, okay? coil of the relay. So, if I, if I press this, if I press this, so if I press this, so it gets closed, it gets closed, but it can, current can flow up to here, but as this is open, still your power supply has not moved up to the relay coil you need to press the second also. That means, S1 and S2 both should be pressed. Here in, in the statement also I am saying, in order to pass a current to the relay coil, S1 and S2, that means you are creating an and logic to operate the relay coil. So, S1 and S2, if both are being operated, then this will give a, get a power supply. So, once this gets energized, as I told you, when you pass a current to the coil, the switches of the relay gets energized. So, how many switches are there for this relay? You can just observe that in the line 2, line 3 like that, here only 2 lines. So, in the line 2, if you check, there is a K1 written somewhere here. And the K1 switch is also open type. So, that means we have used one of the switches of this relay box. Okay? So, once you energize the relay coil, the one of the switches of that relay gets closed. So, that means this gets closed because that is previously it was open. When you energize, the force will pull the rod 
and NO will become NC, NC will become NO. So, uh, that is why here NO was there. Now, this will become NC. When this gets energized, that will become NC. Now, if you check the second line, second line, this line, the power can go through this relay switch to the solenoid valve. That is your output element. So, we wanted to energize this solenoid valve we wanted to energize this solenoid valve with the help of a relay that is with a automation concept. So, we are not using a direct switches here, we are using the relay and operating the output through the relay or by the use of relay using AND logic is been demonstrated in the electrical circuit. So, now, uh, if, if this is how you can start creating any number of circuits. Suppose if you want to break this. So, if you want to break this, you have to have a one more switch here. So, S3, NC, normally closed type, normally closed type. If you press that, then the power will uh, to the contactor coil will break and your circuit will open. All the outputs will get de-energized. So, that is why uh, you can on and off of the cylinder using uh, use of different elements like this. So, now let us observe how other circuits of basic circuits, I am talking about the basic circuits in my uh, session today and as we move forward we will take some complex industrial application also and we will have a, a discussion of that in detail. So, I hope you have understood now. So, I will repeat a pneumatic diagram is written on the left side, the corresponding electrical diagram is shown on the right side and the pneumatic diagram we have used a 5 by 2 way valve with single solenoid and uh, spring written type, an actuator double acting cylinder is connected to it. So, in its normal position, it is at the retracted position. When you energize Y1, this position move to this position and air supply will gets connected like this and this gets air here, this gets air here and this gets connected to the vent side and this will move forward. But how this will happen? In the previous cases, this used to happen by manually. Now, we have used an electrical means. We are not pulling any lever or we are not pushing the valve levers. Earlier, we used to have a lever kinds of valves or push button pressed kinds of valves. Now, we do not have that. We have an electrical type of valves. So, we need to construct an electrical diagram for that. So, electrical diagram as I explained will have one line on the top and the bottom. This is 24 volts positive and this is 0 and you will be constructing your circuit in different lines, line 1, line 2 like that according to the logical requirement that you need. Here, we have used an AND logic to supply the current to the relay coil. Once the relay coil gets energized, uh, the switching elements of that relay coil gets on and that in turn switches on your output coil. So, this is how the function will occur. Now, take the second case. Say, take the second case, control of a double acting cylinder using single solenoid valve again uh, with single push button. There we have showed a unlogical circuit. Here we are not using unlogic, simple exercise again compared to the previous. So, the same circuit you will take actuator first, you will be taking an actuator and which will which will be connected to a 5 by 2 a single solenoid valve. So, this is the solenoid valve 
and this is the spring which resets the valve when you de-energize this solenoid and I am operating that using only one button that is I take only S1. If I press S1, the current will flow to the conductor element K, K1 here and K1, 1, 3, 1, 4 gets closed in the second line means one of the switching element, NO switching element of this contactor is being used and that gets closed, that gets closed here and because of that, because of that, so this gets closed because of that Y1 gets energized. Now, we will take uh, one more example in which I consider even the speed control of the cylinders. We have already discussed how the speeds are controlled in the pneumatic cylinders. We use a flow control valve. So, but we do not have a electrical flow control valves in this case. So, we use a manually flow control valve that we fix it very close to the cylinders and we turn the knobs of this uh, flow control valve as per the requirements to adjust the speeds of the cylinder. Here, we will use uh, instead of we will use a two sensors or sensing elements which are uh, S2 and S3. Okay? So, uh, using this S2 and S3, so S2 and S3 which can be a roller electrical limit switches type or a sensor depending upon the application. Let us now we will assume this as a, a roller electrical type of limit switch and we have placed that one here and the another one here. So, uh, now as in the initial position S2 is there. So, that means here we have taken here in the normal position means in this position air is going to this side. So, it is going freely through this path and this side is uh, controlled. Okay. However, it is going to vent in the initial position now, it is going to vent. So, it is in the retracted position. In the retracted position S2 will be closed means it will be already in the pressed condition. So, this is how that been shown here. So, uh, if you press S1, so that is a, a switch 1 we have used to operate the circuit. So, now S2, S2 is this. So, if I relate S2 is this which is already placed, pressed because in the initial position this is at the back end. So, the, as it is at the back end, this is already closed. So, the power can reach to the K1, contactor element K1. So, the K1 is represented like this. In the K1, we have a uh, 1 NO and 1 NC. Here, this is NO, this is NC. We only use the NO element of the K1. So, where Observe this, this is very interesting to study the drawings, you should understand this. Here he has given NC and this is NO. In the NC column, nothing is there. That means we have not used the NC element of this contactor. So, however, if you see this NO, NO column, we have written 3. What is the meaning of this 3? So, 3 means you observe the one of the element uh, switch of that uh, contactor element which is located in the line 3. So, observe now 1, 2, 3, yes it is there here. So, this is what related here, this is what being related here. So, means in the line 3 we have used one of the element of this K1. So, that is normally open type of switch that we have used. So, that means if this becomes an adjust, this gets closed. Now, let us observe what happens. I 
as I told you, as I told you, this is at the retracted position when you press S1, the power will move to K1. K1 gets energized, coil of the relay gets energized, because of that this gets closed, this gets closed and the power line 24 volt supply line gets connected to the wall, Y1 side of the wall, Y1 side of the wall means to this side of the wall. When we energize this you know this position gets changed. So, if I focus that what happens here? So, now this gets moved to this position, in that position this gets connected like this. So, that means power air, power air supply will go to this side and this side gets connected to one side. So, it will starts moving forward, it will starts moving forward, it will starts moving forward now. But how long it will move? One question, how long it will move is, as we have a one more element called S3, which is again an electrical kind of a switching element, which we have placed at a distance say, uh, some distance x, some distance x. So, this is the distance which we have fixed. So, this will travel and presses this or hits this or when it moves to that position, it gets on. So, when S3, S3 is this. So, we are coming here. Now, see the relation where we are coming, S3, we are coming here. So, S3 as it travels, when it comes here, S3 gets closed, S3 gets closed. When the S3 gets energized, the current can move to relay coil K2. So, when K2 gets energy, the K2 elements will switch. So, where the K2 element is there, just observe here. It is in the line 4. So, if you observe now 1, 2, 3, 4, fourth line we have that. K2 is written and what is the type of the switch? It is an open switch that we have used. So, as now K2 gets energized, this gets energy, this gets energy coil. So, this gets closed. When this gets closed, the power will move to the now Y2, power will move to Y2. Got it? So, now this will not be there, this will go because they are memory type of thing. When you give a current supply to the other side, it will erases the previous conditions and you are, you are bound to get the second Y2 energized condition, Y2 energized condition eliminating this Y1. So, that is how you can switch on and switch off uh, the selenoids. Here, we have used a double selenoid, not a single selenoid. What is the difference when compared to this and the previous circuit is? In the previous, we were using the, we were using the spring for the resetting. Here, no, no spring. We are using both sides selenoid valves. So, first we will energize Y1 and uh, move forward when it reaches here, we reset the other selenoid valve, uh, reset the first and energizes the second side of the selenoid valve and moves back. So, instead of a spring, we have used uh, one more selenoid valve to operate that, operate the uh, reset position of the valve. So, that is uh, how you can uh, make electrical uh, valves designed as per your requirement, whether it is single selenoid or double selenoid type. So, if it is a single selenoid, you will have a selenoid on one side and spring on the other side. If it is a double selenoid, both the sides uh, will be worked through a, a selenoids which are connected at the both 
ends of the valves. So, now if you understand now single solenoid and double solenoid valves, there are some uh, important uh, circuits that you have to understand with respect to logic is concerned. I have already told uh, in one of the circuits I have used and but however a common circuits which comes in the uh, logical is R and not all these circuits can be uh, considered while designing the circuits as per the application requirement. So, in this slide I have shown two basic circuits one is R logic circuit and the another one is and logic circuit. So, left side shows the R logic circuit, why we call it as R logic here is if you observe one switching S1 is here and S2 is here and this is your 24 volts line, this is 0 line, this is 0 line. So, now uh, uh, for example, I have taken a some hooter or kind of thing. Hooter is a device which makes noise okay, when it gets a power supply. We want to supply the power to this hooter and ensure that it is makes a noise and then stop it. So, that is how I am trying to learn here logical circuits. So, now I am using R logic. So, I have connected one of the switch like this and the another one in parallel to this, in parallel to this, this is in parallel now. S1 and S2 are in parallel. When you put two input elements like this in parallel, then you are trying to create an R logic here. So, that means even if you use this, power will go to this. Okay. That means any one of this. See, if you press this, power will go. Now, if you do not want to press this, now you press this S2. So, then also the power can go from this part to, to the hooter device. So, that means this or this. So, this is how logically we show R logic circuit. So, now in the similar manner to create an AND, we have to use the S1 and S2 in series like this. So, that means operator has to press this and then compulsorily has to press this to pass the current to the device, which may be LED or a hooter in this case. So, uh, this is how we can create a different kinds of logics in the electrical circuits. Now, one step if you go beyond this after learning the logic, you should know some other devices which are used in the electrical circuit design parts. They are mainly sensors, lots of sensors can be used, pressure switches can be used in the circuit. So, flow switches can be used in the circuit. So, means you have to understand the different components, electrical type of components which can be integrated into the circuits. So, now in the basic level as per your syllabus, we will explain the different types of uh, sensors and then move on to some circuits which uses the sensors to build and operate a circuit. So, now uh, the first basic element which is widely used in pneumatics is uh, magnetic grid switches. So, that means in any of the pneumatic cylinder if you find on the cylinder outer surface you can see by using some clamps or slots they fix up some sensors. So, those are magnetic type of sensors for which uh, how that will work and for which what are the components are there that you need to understand. So, magnetically operated rate switches which consists of electrical contactors, 
So, if you observe it here, you can see contacting elements here, see here, here and here we have means some contacting elements which is okay in a sealed glass tube. All these are being put it in a glass tube or in a some casing kind of thing. The terminal of the contactors are taken through an indicating lamp. If you have a switches like this, the terminals means ends of the wire of this will be taken out for the, to enable it to connect it to the circuit part. However, it is taken through a one LED. Why? Because when this gets energized, LED can become on and you can know that the sensor is working. Because in uh, machine uh, uh, complex machines, there are many sensors which are integrated to make motion. And uh, fault finding will become easy if LED kinds of things are provided on the devices. If the device is operative, then the green light will be on. So, uh, they use the technique of putting up an LED uh, which will enable you to understand physically the sensor is working and without uh, uh, making any complex uh, things, you can understand the circuit part, correct circuit part as it functions. So, LED through they will take the wires and the wires is gets connected through a pin or through a some kind of means to the other kinds of the circuit part. So, which is symbolically shown here like this, see symbolically the read switches are shown like this magnetic read switches will be written M inside okay, and normally open type. So, if you if your read switches normally will be in open type and when this piston moves to this position means observe in the second figure. So, this is the first figure here the piston is uh, to the left, but as uh, the piston starts moving, when it uh, comes in line like this, in line like this. So, in the piston we have a one magnetic ring, magnetic sensors can, this magnetic read switches can detect only magnetic elements. So, where is the magnetic element now? So, the magnetic element is this, the amount at the one magnetic ring on the piston. So, because of that as it moves this magnetic ring will come close to the sensing element. So, it detects that magnetic element and the switch gets operated. NO will become NC when it moves here. It will be open here, but when it moves to this part this gets closed. So, that is how your read switches will work. Now, as you know in the relay, in the relay I have told you the relay is uh, the components of the relay if you take in detail now. The coil is represented both ends of the coils are represented as a 1 and A 2 and which is bounded to a core element here, this is the core element and this is your lever which gets operated and which in turn closes the switches. Basically this symbol I have already showed here I am trying to tell you uh, the numbering of how the numbering are being done. So, that is why we use a, a 1 and A 2 like this on the coil side means these terminals are related to the coil that is why we write it as A 1 and A 2 in the coil. And this is your change over contact that is happening means this is normally closed when you energize this, this will move like this. So, means this will become open and this will become closed. So, and if you if it has more than one, so uh, we use 1314 for normally open, all open will be using 11, one, one. observe this 1134. 
2 2 is the second line second element 3 4 only they have used means NOs are designated as 3 4 in the second place so in the if you say this is unit place that is that defines your NOs so all are NOs so that is why we have used the 3 and 4 in all of them first second third fourth so in all of them we use a 3 4 so means all the switches are of NO type uh, I will stop here in the next session I will be continuing with the electronomatics only just understand this this is more important for you without knowing this you cannot work in industry.